Pastor Henry Hildebrandt, this is part two. We are back to our topic of a crisis experience versus easy believism. So we saw last time that, yes, that is all it takes to get a crisis experience in order to make it to heaven. That is all it takes is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All we need to find out is what does that mean, believing in Jesus Christ? there's a danger we're living in a time where this has become a very cheap thing um, i've said sometimes some people have picked up a yard sale experience paid 25 cents for it and if you pay 25 cents for something you are not in a big panic if you lose that and sometimes we look around us in our time we think how could people if the lord really saved them and when we talk about getting saved we, we're talking about being born again we're talking about being redeemed we're talking about giving our life to jesus christ so if there was no crisis involved if your experience did not involve a crisis then it's a cheap experience and then you probably since you only paid 25 cents for it at the yard say we could say figuratively speaking then no big deal if you lose it right but let me tell you something. If you went through a real crisis, and we want to look at one here today, if we go through a real crisis in order to get a hold of a crisis experience, we will not be throwing it away just like that. So what else does it take than to believe in Jesus Christ? Nothing. But it must be a true belief. It must have the proper ingredients. So let's look at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, verse uh, 11 it says and he said a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Not quite what the devil promises the people, right? He tells him, just follow me. You'll have a good life. Don't worry about praying. Don't worry about serving God. Don't worry about keeping yourself uh, away from unrighteousness. Listen. Uh, just join me and you'll have a good life. Doesn't sound like it. it. says he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Jesus is giving us this parable here, this story here about the this prodigal son, we call it. And he lets us know what happened to him. He walked away from his father. And how do we get back? All we want, really, as preachers, isn't that what we want? Isn't that, isn't, aren't we trying to bring people back to God? Isn't that... Actually, all we're talking about, isn't that what church is all about, is we want to get people saved. We want people to have a new life. We want people to be born again. How does that work? How does that work? There's a crisis involved. So you see here what this man is going through. Now, I would like to advance to you that even though we will see the, the different steps here that this young man, young man went through, that doesn't mean that salvation has to take a long time. It doesn't mean that it couldn't happen in a, in a few short minutes. As we saw the thief on the cross, mind you, it's well possible that it didn't take just a couple of minutes because Jesus was on the cross for hours. And so were the malefactors that were crucified um, on each side of him. So there was, there was quite a bit of time that transpired. But whatever the case might be, so there's a few steps involved because in order to get a hold of a crisis experience, in order to get a hold of an experience that will bring you through the difficult times of life, in order to get a hold of an experience that will get you to heaven, we have to make sure that the proper ingredients are involved in believing in Jesus Christ. All right? So it says he sent him to feed his swine. Verse 16, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, this is the first step. Again, I say, these steps don't have to take a long time. Now, some people take longer to break through to in their real experience with God. Others, it goes pretty fast. 
There's no prescription in the Bible telling us it's two minutes, four minutes, one day, two days. All it is, it does take the necessary ingredients in believing in Jesus Christ so that you get, can get a hold of a real experience, a lasting experience. Who would want an experience that is not worth anything that you can throw away the next day and uh, you're, you're, not, you're not feeling the loss of it? So let's see here. So first step, verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Step number two, I will arise and go to my father. So far you see him, if you would just be watching this prodigal son, he's sitting there with the swine, he smells like the swine, he's dressed in ragged clothes, he, he, he eats what the swine are eating, there's no, there's no change yet. He's coming to himself. He's recognizing, what am I doing? My friend, in order to get a hold of a real experience, you must recognize that you're in bad shape, that you need help. No one gets an experience with God unless they recognize the necessity that they need an experience with God. So he said, I will arise. He's speaking to himself. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, here it comes. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. No person is ready for this crisis experience until they recognize I am guilty. I am the one. It's not his fault. It's not her fault. It's not their fault. I did it. Lord, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So far, no physical move. So far, he is still sitting there or standing, whatever he was, He's still not moving. And then verse 20, verse third step, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But before he could say, say the last part that he had planned to say, he wanted to tell his father, make me just as one of thy hired servants. The father interrupts him and says, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead. Here's a, here's a crisis that gets described. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. All right, so here we see what happened, this crisis that this man went through, okay? It gives us a description of what it takes to turn from the life of sin, turn back to God. Now, we could have gone, according to what we often see happening in our time now, we could have gone sent a message to this young man and tell him, all you need to get help is just believe in the Father. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just believe in the Father and uh, you're, you're good. No. Yes, it took believing in the Father. But then, what's, his, what's the fruit? What's the repentance? What is the recognition? What is the restitution? And brethren, all this can happen in a very, very short time, but the ingredients must be there. They must be there. So he had to come to himself. He had to say, I recognize I have sinned. And he had to leave the life of sin. He had to turn his back on the swine. He had to recognize I'm lost. And that was no small thing. This was a crisis that he was in because remember when he left? He had money. He had friends. He was living it. He was living the life. And here he came to the situation. He recognized I'm lost. I'm undone. That's when there was help. And then he arose and he had it, he had it all figured out what he's going to tell his father. I have sinned. Make me as one of thy hired servants. That's when the father came. The father does not go to where the swine are until somebody is leaving the life, the swine life, until somebody is actually leaving that life and moving home. That's when the father comes. Yes, it didn't take anything else but to believe in the Father. But the ingredients of a crisis experience had to be present. And then he was saved. And then he got new life. And then, like the Father said, this, my son, was dead and is alive. Because if you aren't saved, you're dead. 
There's a big difference between being dead and being alive. He was lost and is found. There's a big difference between being lost and, is, and being found. You cannot be dead and alive at the same time. You can't be saved and living in sin at the same time. Those are two different lives. You can't serve two masters. You can't. You either serve the devil or you serve God. And God help us that we as messengers of God would bring the message loud and clear and let the people know there is there is a crisis. There is a price to be paid. Yes, salvation doesn't cost any money, but it'll cost you everything. God will not share your heart with the devil. God will not. When you are ready to give it up all, when you're ready to say, Lord, here I am, I have sinned, that's when the Father will meet you. Guaranteed, he will meet you. And tonight, if you are not saved, God, the Father, Jesus Christ, is ready longing to meet you but you must make the first step you must show by your actions i'm turning my back on sin i'm turning my back on this wine i'm coming home